Okay, this is Annie Holmes. Olumide Popoala. We're in the jungle, or as people here like to say, in the Sudanese area, the jingle. In Calais, it's the 2nd of November. It's early in the morning, there's fog, mist all over the camp. People are starting to wake up. We're drinking spicy cardamom tea in, an, in a cafe that I think must be Ethiopian. Oh no, I think it's Afghan. It's Afghan, yeah. in an Afghan cafe. <coughs> Um, this is our second or third day here, third day here. It's cold today, uncomfortable. Today is also the day that police are supposed to bulldoze a part of the camp to make part, um, to start building a more permanent <coughs> place for how many? For maybe 1,500. 1, 1, There's a lot of police <coughs> around. We um, we've walked past police on foot and police in vans and in riot gear in riot, full riot gear but <laughs> frankly they've been around the last few days so yeah. it doesn't seem unusual so far there was a big police presence when we were leaving last night pub, and we found out oh no when we came back in the afternoon and we found out that there'd been a gas ex a gas cylinder had exploded in a restaurant yeah. um, we're not sure if there were if anyone was hurt, hopefully not. The other thing that's interesting to me, it's my first time here, is Olu came a month ago and it seems like it's kind of doubled in size yeah, and in density. <coughs> tell about the differences, the gravel on the ground, for example. Yeah, so it's bursting. So there are a few main streets here and they seem more, they seem very, very packed. They're, they were packed last time I was here, but there were a lot of volunteers around, so there were distributions going on and now it's just packed and packed with people. I also noticed that there wa weren't as many in distributions, although we were here on a weekend, which is the time that people drive over from the UK, and it's due to increased police presence. So a Sudanese guy I talked to yesterday said that there's less food being given out, <coughs> and things have changed, so it could be that the police is trying to sort of bleed people out slowly. Um, but yeah, it's very, very busy, things have changed, it's tense everywhere. Um, and also, we've <laughs> while we've been here, we arrived on a warm, sunny afternoon, which was just two days ago, and then we s the, we stayed in the camp quite late yesterday evening, and we're coming in early in the morning. Yeah. And just you're just getting a slight sense of what it must be like to be living here and facing winter. Yeah, I can't imagine. No, no, it's it's already difficult on a day like this. We come from our warm shower to come here to this very foggy, cold, soggy um, place and let's not forget they're all on the ground. I mean there's been a lot of effort been made to give people pallets and sort of raise things off the ground so they can stay warm. But there are only six, <coughs> st six um, water stands for this huge population of at least 6,000 and yeah. probably more. Yeah. So yesterday we met a a friend of Olu's from the day before, not really a long-term friend, called Obama, who's from Sudan. And I went to say how we met him. She suddenly, sh we were walking along and she suddenly shouted, there's Obama! And a guy was racing by on his bicycle in his <coughs> socks, for some reason, no shoes. He screamed to halt in the sand <laughs> and then he insisted we follow him. To his office, yeah. because that's what you do when you go, when you <laughs> meet Obama. Maybe to say Obama is very young, 20, 19, possibly even younger. Very, very <coughs> high energy. So it invited brilliant. us to the office, yes. which is maybe in other in other circumstances known as the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And it's in the Sudanese camp, and it's very organized. So it's hanging out with a lot of others. They've really made their own village within the village and um, piles of bicycles, yeah. a fire in the middle, a, sp a hole to let the smoke out. So it was protected on each side with um, some of it really big pieces of bab bubble wrap, so they've partitioned. So if you think of it as a partitioned area with, um, not a roof, but mm. obviously tarpaulin on top and a little window to let the smoke go out. Little wire baskets holding <coughs> all the tea and the 
tea bags and cups and matches and, and kitchen stuff. Kitchen stuff. You could need. So we sat there, they invited us for tea and coffee. Mm -hmm. um, they were on a little kettle on the fire, they warmed the water and slowly more and more of their friends arrived and Obama disappeared. He didn't have enough patience for us. I think it's not <coughs> us. I think generally might short fuse, short just, attention span. Yeah, like short attention energy. span. He's got to move. Um, yes, and I had met him in the morning when I was walking around the camp and that's how I got to know them and I'd interviewed one of his, his friends who's called WhatsApp. So, um, WhatsApp I came and joined us. <laughs> and yeah. Annie and I were saying uh, uh, brilliant Africans always have the best nicknames. Mm. <coughs> but I haven't found out how Obama's been, how he's been named Obama, because he's a bit too old to have been named Obama by his parents. But people are obviously taking on other names here, yeah. I think. It's, uh, but we sat also with a, another friend of his, also from Sudanese from Darfur, who'd with a big bandage on his leg. He said it was an accident with the train. So obviously he was trying to get through the tunnel or onto the train or something, but he didn't, between his small English, our non-existent Sudanese anything, um, Arabic, he um, couldn't or didn't really want to tell us anymore. Yeah. Put a big bandage on his leg. So what did we discuss? We learned a few Arabic words. We discussed mm -hmm. who was married, who was single. Um, and we had another friend of Obama's do imitations of Obama. the American Obama. <laughs> yes. Which is and very good. Very, very <laughs> good. Funny, yeah. So it, I think in a way <coughs> it's like the combination of normal is this weird normality we were talking about mm. just now about you walk along through and it's like a town it's like a village people are going about their business it's pretty organized in certain ways yeah. um, really fast things go up things have gone up and been covered in the time that I've been here just two days yeah. um, there are also different roles so mm. I am going to just throw it out there it seems to me that the Afghans are the entrepreneurs the shops are I have not there are most no, of the shops train. are f run by Afghans, most of the cafes are oh. run by Afghans, so then some Eritreans, but and Ethiopians. Ethiopians, but mostly the on the sort of high street, mm. there's one shop after another, mm. um, there's the Afghans, it's the Sudanese have really organized community area with kitchens, offices, as Obama said, in different places, and then obviously there's other places, especially where Zumaco has been building the hospital and the classrooms that have more permanent structures. And there, uh, I spent quite a bit of time there yesterday with um, Kurdish families from Iraq and they are, so there's this feeling that everyone's walking around and mixing but there's a lot of separate groups, right, yeah. people taking care of each other. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's good and bad, but um, this WhatsApp, who I interviewed yesterday from Sudan, he said he, when he arrived, he just bumped into a Sudanese guy and then they took care of him at least for the first mm -hmm. night until he got set up. So there's a good in there that you have an arrival point. But in a, in a way, it's funny how it replicates the wider mm. world and everybody Divisions, separate, yeah. separated mm. again. On another note, we were sat mm. in the Eritrean bar yesterday mm. and um, it's a guy, Mima, right? Mm. Mima, who Who's been interviewed in The Guardian. And who set up the Eritrean church and said because there are few here, the Eritrean and Ethiopians, they just get on. So what they cannot achieve mm. in their country mm. due, due the to the necessi Africa, yeah. necessities. Mm. Yeah, not just due to the necessity, but also because they're just human beings with similar cultures. Mm. Mm. So there's not that much of a gap.